Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you and may He open the understanding of each of you. May God, in His infinite and eternal mercy, come upon you right now in this moment. Receive from the Spirit that He has given me. Receive there where you are. You who are suffering, struggling, suffering with problems, be free now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Very well. Once the prayer being said, for sure then the answer will be received. Yesterday we were speaking about the importance of people being baptized in water. They need to be baptized in water, which means they need to be buried. They need to be buried, which is the meaning of baptism in water, so that then they will be receiving a new life and the Holy Spirit will be able to dwell in them. But people ask, Bishop, how about those people who are receiving and received the Holy Spirit without being baptized in water. This happens, of course, because God is God. It's not us who make the rules. It's not us. Or doctrines, no, it's not us. Or the religious obligations. No, it's God Himself in the person of the Holy Spirit. Of course, that there are people that go to the altar, they were not even baptized in water yet, but they go to the altar so selflessly, so surrendered, so given, so humbled, that the Holy Spirit comes upon them straight away. When they place themselves on the altar, in a spiritual way, not in a physical way only, but in a spiritual way. Do you understand what I mean? I will explain this better in a different way. Jesus said, God is spirit. Never forget that. Never forget that, my friend. God is a spirit, which means that God is everywhere, everywhere, inside and outside of each of us. He knows all things. He knows everything about us, our thoughts, what we are going to think next year. He already knows. Such is His greatness. Such is His greatness. So, because He is Spirit, because God is Spirit, then He communicates with everything that exists in heaven and on earth in Spirit. So, God's territory, if we can say it this way, to communicate with us is in the spiritual field. It's the spiritual field. You have to be in spirit in order to hear the voice of God. You have to be in spirit in order to worship God. You have to be in spirit in order to speak to God. Therefore, for example, if you say the Lord's Prayer for the sake of it, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name, nothing's going to work. It's not a prayer. It's not a prayer. You are just repeating words. It's just blah, blah, blah. That doesn't bring any kind of answer from God. But when you, with respect and consideration, in spirit, which means your thoughts are a hundred percent in Him, in God, then He receives your prayer. Wherever it is that you are, whatever are 
in your circumstances, the circumstances that are around you, it doesn't matter. You do not need to necessarily be with a pastor or a bishop or anybody to enter the presence of God because you have to be spiritual just as God is spirit. In order for us to communicate with Him, we have to be in spirit. Of course, that He manifested Himself physically to Abraham. He appeared to Abraham. However, it doesn't mean that He will appear to us physically today. So, He uses the spiritual field which is the field of God's dwelling place, of His dwelling place, because He is a spirit. And his spirit is, is reason, is intelligence, is knowledge. He demands, He requires from each of us that we worship Him in spirit and in truth, which means sincerity, purity, sincerity. It's not holiness. Holiness is a state that you find yourself when you live by faith and in the faith. When you present faith to God, then you become holy. That's why it's necessary that those who draw near God believe that He exists. And that's what pleases God. That's the faith that pleases Him. So, when you say a prayer, for example, you do not necessarily need to be asking, oh, Bishop, pray for me, so-and-so, pray for me. You don't need to be begging for a prayer. No. If you are in spirit, then you will speak to God and He will listen to your prayer. I am not here saying that you have to have the Holy Spirit to speak to God. No. Obviously, when the person is in the flesh, it's hard for them to enter in spirit. Very hard. And that's why the flesh has to be buried, because it impedes you from being in spirit. When a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit after being buried in the baptism in water, then the person in spirit enters in the presence of the Father any time of the day or night, whatever are the circumstances, because they are in spirit. They are in God's field. They are not in their own field, which is the world, their flesh, the desire of their flesh, of the heart, the lusts, envies, gluttony, vanities, and all sorts of fleshly ways on earth. So, God is a spirit, and He wants you to also be spirit. That's why the Apostle Paul, directed by the Holy Spirit, said the following. He said that the first Adam was a living being, Adam and Eve, but the last Adam who is Jesus, is a life-giving spirit. Because Jesus, even though he had been born of God, baptized in water, and received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, he was born of God, he was born of the Spirit. He was born there from Mary's womb. But he had to be baptized in water to bury his carnal nature, let's say, his human nature, he had to bear it so that he could receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, so that he could receive the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit could guide him, direct his steps, and, and give him conditions to face evil. So God wants to do that with you. However, you cannot forget, for example, just as, as an example, to explain this better. Is it possible? Let me get closer, very close to you, 
very close here so you can look in my eyes and see and receive from the spirit that God gives us. Look at that. Imagine you wanting to enter in spirit in the presence of God with your thoughts full of filth, dressed with dirt, your flesh full of desires and lust, full of dreams and desires that are personal and personal projects. And can you enter in spirit in God's presence? No, your flesh is alive. How can you be alive? Your flesh be alive. Live and in color, if I can say. And you are in spirit in the presence of God. It's not possible. So God gives us the Holy Spirit for that reason. So that there is communication between the child and the father. The father and the child. So that there will be this intimate communion that he can speak and you can hear. Remember what Jesus said, whoever has an ear, let him hear. Why did he say that? Everybody has ears, right? But not everybody has ears to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit because not everybody is a child of God. Not everyone is born of God. Unfortunately, very few are born of God, very few, because very few have believed. The word of God has been preached throughout all the world, but very few people have believed. And only the few who have believed, these have had received power to be made children of God. But the vast majority have not believed. The majority chose to satisfy their flesh. The majority have chosen to satisfy the desires of their flesh than to live in spirit and communicate with God. And that's the reason why many people don't receive the Holy Spirit, because God knows even the intention of their heart. He knows your intention, my friend. So there is no point, for example, in you going on the altar with immoral desires. You can take all of your money, your house, your properties, you can give everything you want. But if you do not go on the altar with sincerity and purity, the purity of sincerity, then it won't work because God wants your heart. It's your heart. The heart of Adam and Eve were stolen, were stolen. And that's why human beings grew up with their heart in the hands of the devil. That's the reality. And that's why the world is this way. And that's why they want to destroy the family. Because they were born or they lost that which God had given them, which was to be spirit, life-giving spirit. They lost holiness. They lost their relationship with God. And because of that, humanity grew up this way. So your suffering, the suffering that we all face, is not God's fault. God has done the best for us. But the human choice was to want to know curiously what evil was and, and see what's, what's happened. So, dear friend, there is, there is, however, the possibility of you having a new life, a life according to what God has created, a life of dignity, of honor, of truth, of respect, of righteousness, far from sin. Because that's what pleases God. And those who please God is pleased by Him. 
That's why the Holy Spirit comes. When the Holy Spirit comes, He guides us into all truth. And if we obey, then He will please us with a life of quality. This is what happens. That's what happened with Job. It's what happened to him. So, my friend, as long as you are not baptized in water by immersion, truly, which means you are baptized in water, but you did not repent, you enjoy sin. Yes or no? You enjoy sin. Oh, it's just a little bit, just, just a taste. No. Then your baptism wasn't valid at all. You have to go down to, to the waters with that desire. Never again will I live in sin. Never again will I do that and, and the other again. You have to go down the waters with this desire to please God, with the desire to do His will, with repentance from everything you've done wrong. That's when your baptism is valid. And then when you raise up from the waters, when the pastor raises you up from the water, is for you to start living in newness of life, a new thought, new heart, new vision. Malice is eliminated. That those habits, those mannerisms that were not good, everything was eliminated. Then the Holy Spirit comes upon you in order to guide you towards the glory of God so that he, he can be sanctified through you. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And what matters, which means the important thing, is that those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth, not in emotion, not in, in with feelings or a beautiful gospel song that is nice and beautiful and you cry, ah, oh, this, hallelujah. You cry, cry, cry. You feel a great, extraordinary emotion. You, you think that that is the presence of God, but it's not. It's not at all. God is mind, God is spirit and, and reasoning. Obviously, that in the presence of God, we have, we feel emotions, but not emotions of the heart that is rotten and carnal and old and deceiving. No, the emotion we feel in God's presence is spiritual, is in the conscience. Ask a person that has already been baptized in the Holy Spirit how the baptism is. Of course, they will know how to explain. They will only tell you one thing. They will tell you, after I received the Holy Spirit, I was filled with peace, peace that I cannot express, such peace. And this peace brought so much joy to my soul, and I had problems at the time. But still, I had peace, and I continue with this peace. I had joy in my soul, and I continue with that joy in my soul, despite of my problems. They are still there. I still have to face them. So this is spirit. This is the spiritual field. Learn that. Place that into practice, and your life will never be the same again. The day that you receive the Holy Spirit, you will never again be attached to anything in this world and let alone attached to people. You you have the love of God towards those that still don't know what you know, who is the Lord Jesus. And then you will want to pass on to them what you have. And that's what God has given me. This is what God gave me since the beginning when I received the Holy Spirit. A love, and it's not a feeling. It's a love that it's intelligent. A love that we have. We, we say, if I don't win this person over to Jesus, when they die, they will go to hell. My God, I cannot 
carry this thought with me. You know, I have to win this person to Jesus. So we will give what we have received from God. Those who have the Holy Spirit want to give and give. And those who don't have the Holy Spirit only want to receive and receive and receive. God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.